All right. Uh oh. Uh oh. Yes, we have Rishi. Whoa. We cleaned it out here today. Uh, normally, it looks like a brown sludge because they come out so thick. Wow. Well, you can smell it. Whoa. Yeah. Wow. I'm David Wolf, and I'm here to tell you about what got me here. This is David Wolf, a raw food enthusiast, nutrition expert. I've really had a passion for it for almost 25 years. Recepts militaris grown on brown rice. We freeze dry them to preserve them for a very long shelf life. They have a texture like popcorn and a flavor like mild mushroom. Phenomenal, looks amazing. Wow, so mm. that's not a Cordyceps sinensis, it's, what was the one that you said? Cordyceps militaris. Okay. It's a local strain from Philadelphia. Really, yes. so it's a North American strain? Yes, it is. Fantastic. All right, well these, these are two principles of this operation. We are in, let me just show you where we are here. We're at Family Fungi, and this is outside of Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. And we're about to go see a mushroom operation, and we'll film whatever they'll let us film. How's that sound? Oh, yes. And then you can see, right? I knew I was home when I saw this right here. Look at this shaga right there. And you can see, looks like some Ganodermas right yes. there, and some probably red belted polypores. Oh, yes. And some Apalantum and some turkey tail. <laughs> Great stuff. And you best. can see there's some, this is Rishi here, these little sliced bits of Rishi. And uh, we're here with our. Crew, all right, team, say hello. <laughs> That's the best ever. All right, that'll be video awesome. one, and then we're gonna go inside and check it out. But let's have a quick look at what you got here. You got some oh, of your products. Please tell them about this. this yes, is what I actually, to you can see. try these out too. Oh, this is a garicon we grow on our farm. Oh wow! Okay. We extract as a, it as a cream. Yes, it's antiviral. So if you ever get a virus, say cold cough, uh, viral pneumonia, mono, uh, hand, foot, mouth disease, you put it on within a couple days, it will remove that completely geez are we gonna have to like get everything you have uh very possible <laughs> very very possible because these amazing. guys uh we've had people with hand foot mouth disease that are uh children and they have the sores in their mouth all around they put it on within a couple days it goes away so the hand mouth and disease is like what you get from on a farm right uh, yes and it can happen in any number of situations in the school yeah, like you know, with quickly, kids right? yeah it's a virus right it can yeah. go very normally quick. it has to run its normal course and we can provide direct intervention using this. Awesome. This is like okay, so here we have your growth medium, right? This is your growth medium for your mushrooms. This, if you can believe it, is just our spawn. Oh, that's just spawn? That's just spawn. This is our next week's worth of spawn. Okay. And we grow it on rye grain from a local farmer here. So you're gonna take bits of this. Break it all up. Yep. Until it's individual little kernels of mycelinated grain. And if you look on the side here, you can see a whole bunch that are already ready to go. Oh, that's already going. Yes. Those so are, those will eventually produce a fruiting body. Those are going to be mixed with hemp fiber. We're breaking every rule known to mushroom growing here. Just, just pointing it out. So what does that mean? So you're going to put hemp fiber in there yeah. and that's going to provide a, a different substrate for the mushroom yes. and probably a better they, quality mushroom. They love hemp. They really love hemp. We actually mix it with recycled grain from a local distiller. So he makes spirits right up here, stuff like this. Okay. So this is the local distiller that's making yeah. a, a yeah. vodka. And then we mix his... And this is a grain mash. vodka. Yes. All grains. We use any type of grain on our farm from barley, rye, uh, other wheats. We have even used corn in the past. Anything they will produce, we can consume using mushrooms. Phenomenal. And, and when you say hemp fiber, you're not talking, you're talking about the stock, like I'm the curd. All of the uh, normally used for construction material. Uh -huh. We're actually converting it completely to protein. So it's able to, to eat up that cellulose. That's basically yes. what's happening there, right? Yes. And then it's, it's going to develop like that. And then eventually out of the top of that bag is going to pop out. Like if you can see, there's a top of oh, that bag. Oh, we're going we're gonna to blow your mind. Oh, we're, oh, we're going to get to see that. Yes. Okay. Yes. So I'll stop the camera here and we'll go see that. Tell us about this. This looks like an we amazing have, setup. Jeez. Yes. Built from the ground up with our own proprietary design. Each room is its own environment. They have their own Each room controls. is its own mushroom? It's its own environment. So we can grow any number of species in there, independent from each other. 
which means if it has a specific need of less light or more light, more ventilation less, we can grow specific species at different stages. And it also means I don't need to use any chemicals or sprays because if a batch fails, I can close that room off and it does not affect anything else. Incredible. Yes. So a batch fail, that's interesting. We'll, we'll get back to that as we get in there and take a look. Are we gonna look inside again? Yes, yes All we are. All right. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna Let's have a look. Okay. Here's a lion's mane room. This is lion's mane mushroom, everybody. Here we go. Look at this. So you can see how they're just starting to pop out here. And they don't mature. We do not grow in bags, and we grow at such a high density that they are not maturing at all. Oh, look at that. You're getting yeah. sprayed right there. Yeah, this is our misting system. <laughs> Works beautifully. What, what, so say that again. What did you mean by maturity of the mushroom? You notice how they look like cauliflower? Uh -huh. They haven't toothed yet. Yes, so they will never tooth. Okay. We don't provide them enough air, so they will just continue growing until they fall off. They can get upwards of several pounds if we let them remain on here. And we usually try and harvest them about this size for restaurants and for private customers. And wow. they taste great this way. You can actually cut them like a steak and they have a flavor like lobster and a texture kind of like a, uh, a Wagyu steak. If you've ever tried a very soft, rare steak. So it's these are high protein. Perfect texture. Oh, very, very high protein. What, what's the percentage, 20% protein? Right around 20 to 30%. And they also have an oil in them. So if you extract these into alcohol, you can actually gain the terpene content in a pure oil format, combine it with an MCT oil, and vape it. <laughs> yes. it it's very good. So about vaping lion's mane, which is a very interesting concept. We know that aranacines of the lion's mane family have this neuro protective, neuroregenerative effect. Yes. Does the vaping of the lion's mane provide that? Yes, it does. Wow. Uh, so those compounds pass through. Uh, you heard sure it here, do. folks. That is just outrageous. Great news. <laughs> it's huge news. And when you're harvesting them, I actually have to wear gloves because my hands will get so sticky from the oils that I can't put them back in the containers. I'm just starting to get covered in oils. No. Oh, uh oh, uh oh. Yes, we have reishi. Whoa. We cleaned it out here today. Uh, normally it looks like a brown sludge because they come out all day. Wow. Well, you can smell it. Whoa. Yeah. Can you that sludge and make something from oh, it? Oh, yes, you can. Be worth it? Uh, you just need to have the right equipment. Oh, wow. It smells like reishi. So we have two different species of reishi in here and then turkey tail up front. And these ones, these are a uh, Ganoderma tungsate. As far as I know. Oh, the suge? Yes. That's the, on this left side? Both of these are. Oh, okay. And then this one is a lucidum. Oh, you think, so these are lucidums down here? Yes. yes. Jeez, and look at this. then the uh, biggest mind blower of our farm right now is this. What is that? This is my Taki. Whoa. Look at that. This is my Taki growing on hemp. Never been done before. Maitake growing on hemp. And maturing very beautifully. They look great. Jeez, these must large. taste amazing. Oh, wow, oh, yes. look at that one. Yes, they taste amazing. This is incredible. Uh, they're actually getting so big that they're falling off now. They're like, oh, they're worlds. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, and this was a complete mistake. I thought this culture was a yellow reishi, and then it started growing black lumps, and I'm like, what is that, guys? So I talked to my uh, culture source, and he said it's my talkie. Best mistake ever. <laughs> That's what uh, how they invented the, the light bulb. Yep. Exactly, right there. It just fell down. Okay. <laughs> yep. yeah. Wow. Check that out. Yeah, the ratio. Just, look at that. The ratio just dropped. Yeah, it's really Look at that. Yeah. You can tell that they're, they're look, sticking out. So some, and some, both sides. sometimes the base drops, but here, the we ratio really drops. Right. The reishi drops. <laughs> <laughs> he just got too heavy and fell off right now. It's heavy. But wait, there's more. Yes, there is. 
All right, the reishi growing on hemp was outrageous, but this is going to be some gold uh -oh. oysters growing. Look at that. Okay, let's come out of here and go to the next room. Check that out, everybody. Are these grown on hemp as well? Yes. Wow. There you have it. All of our mushrooms and then, are fed the exact same medium, and yet they grow this incredible variety of colors and textures and shapes. What do you call this one? This This is pink oyster. Yeah. Pink oyster. It tastes like bacon. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Some great textures to them. Let's, let's get it right. Okay. And you're going to see. That. Wow. Okay, yeah. Oh, Spin that one around. That is amazing. It's always funny when people And this is second harvest now. So they've already grown one round. How many rounds can you get out of a bag? Usually four in a room. And then we actually sell the logs for people to grow at home. Mm -hmm. So then they can take about half and get another couple pounds okay. without doing anything. So all those kits you find in grocery stores, rip off. Take half of this for the same price. You'll get three times as many mushrooms and you don't have to do anything. Deal. Do you ship to Ontario? Uh, right now, we're actually looking at doing larger contracts because people want to buy the ton for their gardens. I want to buy some for my yeah. gardens. This yeah. is incredible. Yeah. Look at and this, everybody. Just, you know, that. great thick caps. They're very meaty. You can actually feel them, how they just give. Yeah, they're, they're meatier than, they're almost like meatier than the wild. They're kind of yeah. halfway between a Pleurotus, um, Astrius and a Pleurotus dryanus. You know the um, dryad saddle? Yes, that is a good comparison. Hmm. Check this out, everybody. Perfect repurposing of poultry rails. Those could be chickens hung up on there or even cows, but no. What's up there? They're hanging bags of mycelium. And this is the new growth. Look at this. And they're getting three to four flushes, right? Yes. Three to four flushes coming out of each bag. So they'll pick that in about four days when they get bigger. And then another one will come shortly thereafter. Okay, check this out, everybody. This is the hemp that's going into their product. And you can see here is the lighter material from the outside, the fibers that are used in clothing, right? This is your hemp fiber for textiles. But over here, this is what's called the curd. And these are the harder units, the bits of the middle of the stalk. And this is the material that's used in like hempcrete. So this is in the middle of the stalk of the hemp plant, just so we're clear on that. And then over here, you've got another ingredient that's gonna go in. This is recycled mash from distilleries and breweries. Oh, that's the mash. Yes, it's okay. been dried out. And they've already, they've already gotten the vodka out. Yes, exactly. <laughs> they've taken all of the sugars. All that's remaining is the fiber and the protein. Okay. Exactly what the mushrooms need. Uh huh. And we mix it together, add water on a usually one to one ratio with the hemp, and then it mixes for four hours during its heat cycle, cools off overnight, and then we bag in the morning. What's this here that you have in your hand? Is that a this, stalk of a hemp plant? A, yeah, this is the hemp stalk. Oh, there it is. Okay. So you can see There's the, the curd on the inside, and then that outside material is just what's frayed off of the outer. Yep, Our favorite exactly. part about processing the hemp is we're actually using their waste. 
So when in the process of separating these two elements, there's a bit of a mix of both. Now neither the textile or the construction industry wants this, right? They can't make clothing out of this when there's hard pieces. So this oh, is the stuff that they not, give us. It's not clean enough. That's yes. right. So this has uh, normally been going to fields to rot, to grow some snow mold. Instead, we can take it on our farm and grow delicious, productive mushrooms. Success is persistence. I will persist until I succeed. I will never consider defeat. I will remove from my vocabulary such words as quit, cannot, unable, impossible, hopeless, and retreat. For those are the words of fools. I will persist until I succeed.